What is good guys, we are back with more smoke on snake drive, we got Kdot vs Chumflesh aka Zamyaru aka Jaina, I will just call him Za in this video, this guy changed his name quite often on Smogon and yeah looking at it, we have two cool mons that you don't see much in OU, Slowking that is most likely Assault Vest which can check Alakazam, I think Shadow Ball should only do around 30-ish, then um, we have Infernape that is most likely Choice Scarf because it can outspeed Volcarona at plus one, uh, do a lot to it with either Flare Blitz or Stone Edge, though I'm not sure if it will have Stone Edge. Since um, outside of Infernip, the other, the only other potential rocker is the Mega Marwell, and you usually don't see rocks on Mega Marwell, so it might be Scarf Rocks in Infernip, uh, which means he might not have space to run Edge. Um, Flabbit is really obvious because uh, Infernip outspeeds Megina after Shift Gear if it's Choice Scarf, so you want that Flabbit stab. Then U turn most likely for momentum. Um, might be rocks on it if it's not rocks on Marwell. And the last move could be um, Close Combat or Stone Edge, something like that. Um, the Tornadoes has to be Rocky Helmet in my opinion on Zara's team because he has a Boodle and he gives Kartana terrain and he's quite weak to Kartana. And then the uh, Z-move is either on the Bulu or on the Zygarde. If the Z-move is on the Bulu, then the Zygarde could be either Bandit or sub -Glare Leftovers. If Z-move is on Zygarde, then the Bulu will just be Leftovers. Um, Bulu still has to be Bulky variant on Zara's team. Most likely Bulk Up because he's pretty weak to opposing Zygarde. And it still needs some spadef because he's otherwise really weak to Ash Greninja. And yet it's just a secondary check for Alakazam as well. On Kato's side we see a Mega Alakazam, then Rock Citron, that's the only potential rocker. Uh, Tangress has to be a Salt Vest, he's really weak to Greninja otherwise. Um, Celestina is probably mixed defensive, more so spadef I would assume to check Mega Alakazam. Um, turn 1 is Zara's gonna switch out here most likely into Slowking because that, ha that scouts for like... Um, HP Fire Protein Greninja that also scouts for um, Specs Hydro Pump Ash Ninja or Waterium Ash Ninja. So Sloking is always the play here. I think Kedot is probably just gonna go for the best move he has to hit the Mega Marvel because Mega Marvel is um, definitely a threat that he doesn't want to play around with and it's just turn one. There's like no reason to go for Spike here. Like okay you could go for Spike expecting the switch but it's just too risky turn one I feel. So Hydro Pump does 15 and we see it's um, Battle Bond Greninja. Assuming that's Choice Specs, that is definitely um, Assault with Sloking, taking only 15%. Now we're gonna see either the um, Tornadoes or the Tangros come out here from KDOT. Um, the Z-Move user on KDOT's side is either the Heatran or the Tornadoes. It doesn't have to be Helmet Tornadoes on his team, but it could still be um, Helmet. Like he has multiple checks for Katana, so he could also be Offensive Z-Move Tornadoes. Um, so yeah, either the... Um, Tang or the uh, Torn is gonna come out here, we're gonna see either a Scald or a Future Side from the Sloking most likely. I'm um, not sure what the other two mo moves on the Sloking are, it could be something like Shadow Ball or Signal Beam maybe. Uh, it could also be Dragon Tail, though he doesn't have Spikes support on the team, I think, yeah. He doesn't have Spikes, so he might not be Dragon Tail. Also, Kdot is on the Leviathans if I'm not mistaken, and Zaha plays for the Mambas. So we just see the Tornadoes come out on the future side and I would just go for U-turn here if I'm KDOT because you don't want to let that Mega Marvel in, that Mega Marvel is a huge threat. And even if the Slow King stays in, U-turn is completely fine into Tangrowth because you have a Tangrowth in the back that can also take the future side that will um, come out in I think one or two turns. So U-turn is always the play. Yeah, unless you have Heatwave to um, anticipate the Marvel on the switch then he could have also gone for that but yeah, uh, if he doesn't have Heatwave then U-turn is the play. Heatwave comes out, we will most likely see the Rocks go um, up here from KDOT. And um, Zaz is probably gonna switch into like um, Zygarde or Slowking. Switch out into Zygarde. You do see the rocks go up, and um, Kato takes the future side, gets crit there. Um, crit doesn't matter too much, I think. So um, he can just go into Tangrowth here. He's pretty much forced to go into Tangrowth. And um, Zar might go for like Glare or Toxic. Um, glare is usually more common these days. Um, yeah, Kato is forced into the tank, there's no way he's gonna stay in and risk his Heatran. That's like one of the best checks he has for the Mawile. We also see no leftovers on the Heatran, which means it's most likely Z-move Heatran. And um, yeah, Torn is probably Rocky Helmet or Metronome. Um, I would assume it's Rocky Helmet then, if Heatran is the Z. Um, what Z would it be? I assume it's just Fire Z Heatran. It doesn't... I don't think it's Steel Z because he has a Celestealer to deal with Mega Lardis, and he also has Celeste Dealer for Mega Alakazam, and Dex Steel Z is usually used to hit Alakazam and Mega Lardi. So you just go Tangros, there's the Glare. Now Kdot could just go for um, HP Ice, 
or he could also put a double into Greninja because double into Greninja would cover the Tornadus and it would also cover the Mawile because after rocks Tornadus is in range of Specs Hydro Pump and Mawile should also be in range of Specs Hydro Pump after one rock switch I think because um, Mawile even if it Megas it still doesn't have great speed death but yeah we're most likely just gonna see the Tornadus come out here from um, Zar and I think Kato oh yeah just stays into HPS which is also fine just in case Zar wants to stay in with the Zygarde go for like sub or something uh we're most likely just gonna see a d4 key from za to get rid of the rocks carrot is probably gonna go to his own tornado since it's still healthy and um now we know that the heatron is probably z since it didn't show leftovers so um assuming carrot's torn is helmet max hp it can take hurricane from opposing torn um okay ish so it can come out here um i don't think he wants to go heatron and let the heatron get weakened more because like i said earlier it's like one of the best checks he has for the more while so i think that's just gonna defog here and Kerala is gonna switch out into his own Tornadus. Um, those are the obvious plays. I just just defog, Tornadus comes out. And we're gonna either see um, a U turn or Hurricane here from Kerala. That's either gonna go to Sloking or Morwell. Goes into Sloking, Hurricane misses. And I would just U turn again if I'm Kerala. Um, as that pivots into the Morwell, predicting a knockoff and gets the play right. And now um, he's gonna go for what is most likely um, Thunder Punch or Knockoff. And Kedot is gonna U turn out into what is most likely the Heatran. Um, unless he wants to throw his Celesteela out, but I think he wants the Celesteela. Um, because that Bulu can be a threat for Kedot. Well, since the Bulu is most likely bulk up to deal with opposing Zygarde. So it actually might beat Celesteela 1v1 now that I think about it. So he might go Celesteela here, but Heatran is like the play that. Like, Heatran makes a bit more sense, I feel, because it should be able to live a hit outside of Brick Break, which is really rare on Mobile. It's used sometimes to hit Heatran on the Switch. Um, some people use Focus Punch, but Mimolet used Brick Break in OLT, because if Tornadis U-turns on Mobile, then Focus Punch doesn't work, but Brick Break would still work. But I assume you're just gonna see either a knockoff or a Thunder Punch, as uh, Kato just just go out into the Heatran. And, um, yeah, I don't think Vaz gonna stay in and risk anything here. Um, I don't know if he has Sucker Punch, but even if he has Sucker Punch, there's no point going for it because Kedot might just go for rocks. And just staying in is too risky with the Mawile, um, since the Mawile can be such a threat in this game. So Kedot is probably going to go for rocks, and Zar is going to switch out into either Zygarde, Infernape, or Sloking is what I'm thinking here. But, yeah. Um, I mean, Kedot can still check the, the Mawile with, like, offensively with the Greninja. Um, but he can't really switch into it anymore now that the Heatran is so low. So next time the Mawile comes in, he will have to sack either the Heatran or let the Celesteela take a huge hit. So Infernape comes out. Uh, Kedot could pivot out into his into his um, Tornadus here maybe. I think we're gonna either see the Rocks or... Um, yeah, like the... I don't think he's gonna close combat because there's a Tornadus. Kedot goes hard into Alakazam. If he breaks those Rocks, props to him. But that was risky, so he's probably just gonna Psychic playing it safe, he might also Shadow Ball predicting the Sloking to come out. So I goes into Sloking, Psychic does 12, nice Assault Vest. Um, just throws off a Shadow Ball, um, did he Trace Regenerator with Alakazam? I didn't pay attention. I think he did Trace Regenerator, yeah, so that's cool for him. So he was able to easily take that Dragon Tail, and Zaya is gonna be uh, forced to switch. Probably gonna go back to his Tornadus here, so Kedot could pull a double into Greninja that I talked about earlier, maybe he will pull a double this time. Because Greninja covers the Morwell and it covers the Tornadus. Especially the Morwell is a mon that Kato doesn't want to let in for free. Exactly, doubling into Greninja makes a lot of sense. He pulls the trigger there, um, gets the double right. And he could technically spike here because Zar is pretty much forced into his Bulu. But I think he's just going to pump um, in case the Torn stays in. He will get his Battle Bond. And then he will still see what type of Bulu it is. He will get some good chip on it. It should do like 25 to 30 ish. Um, yeah, 32, that's some good chip. Definitely speed def Bulu, but not max speed def, with some sort of speed of some sort of attack. So, um, yeah, it's no leftovers Bulu, so it's probably Z-move with Synthesis, Bulk Up, uh, Horn Leech, and then either Super Power or Stone Edge. Um, kind of depends on if the Ape has Edge. If the Ape has Edge, this is probably most likely Super Power on the um, Bulu. So, uh, Kato is probably just going to fire off a Heavy Slam here. Zar goes for Bulk Up and is able to eat that up quite well. 46. Um... So, how does Kato beat this? Does he just keep attacking and... Hmm. He could also go to Tangros if he has Sludge Bomb or go to Torn and fire off Hurricanes. 
Uh, definitely has multiple checks for this um, Bulu. Uh, yeah, also Bulu not having leftovers is cool for him. Yeah, he goes in the Torn. Yeah, he either was gonna go to Torn or the Tang. Because like staying in with Salas Dida just lets the Bulu set up multiple times. So switching out was definitely the correct play. So most likely gonna see a switch into what I think is gonna be the um, Slow King here. Could also go into Morwell, but no, no, Slow King makes more sense because you don't want to let the Morwell take a Hurricane since Morwell doesn't have the best speed left. So you just go into Slow King and Kettle makes a good play there going for U-turn. Um, I assume if the um, Bula would have stayed in there, then he would have still had been fine because he might have Sludge Bomb on Tangrowth. So yeah, Alakazam comes out and he's just going to Shadow Ball, I think. Um, does If Psychic brings this in range of Shadow Ball, then he can also go for Psychic, but I think he's just going to... Uh, probably throw off a Shadow Ball. And Zara really doesn't have great answers with Sloking being this low. And he might just go for have to go for Dragon Tail here with the Sloking. He really doesn't have the best options. Um, yeah, I like how Kedot played it. Uh, he made the double into Gren earlier, which gave him info on the um, Bulu set. It forced it to heal. The rocks are also amazing. The Sloking is getting quite pressured. Zara's gonna have to switch out here again into either Tornadus or more well, most likely into Tornadus. Um, Kedot could pull a double again into either Greninja or Alakazam. Does pull a double into Alakazam. Alakazam was actually the better double than Greninja now that I think about it because um, since the slogan is so low, Alakazam is so much more scary to Zara's team. But if he doubles into Greninja, then he could just go... I uh, think he just Psychics here. Yeah, yeah. And he goes hard into Morwell. And... Um, he can threaten his out with a potential Sucker Punch. We don't know if he has Sucker yet, but Kellogg is not going to risk it here. I assume he's just going to switch out into either the Heatran to sack it off or into the Salas Dealer. He's most likely just going to sack off the Heatran since it's super low. It's at like 12% after Rock, so not really a point in keeping it around. Um, not He doesn't have Healing Wish or anything to bring it back, so I assume he's just going to sack the Heatran here. And then afterwards, he can go to Greninja to scare out the Mawile. Well, yeah, double into Zam was better than doubling into Gren because Zard really doesn't have great Zam answers with his sloking being that low. But if he doubled into Gren, then Zard could have gone into Bulu. So yeah, if you think about it for a bit, double into Zam was pretty cool. Yeah, um, Kedot is not going to risk his Zam. He's obviously going to switch out here and most likely sack the Heatran. Uh, Zam might just hard attack, predicting that, like with either knockoff, player of or Thunder Punch. Also, a player of picks off the Heatran, and now Greninja can come out to force out the Mawile. And then Zaz pretty much forced um, into Tapu Bulu, so I think he will just go to the Bulu here. And does Keta predict that go for a spike? W um, I think he just goes for a pump here. Zaz goes in the Torn, predicting a spike. So that was a really risky play on Zaz. Keta actually tries to. Damn! Keta pumps in case the Mawile stays in, or in case he goes into Torn, predicting the spike. Yeah, yeah. I get the play, because if he gets torn in on a spike, then he can defog all the hazards away. If that pump hit, I think that was pretty much a guaranteed kill. Or if Zara maybe got a mineral, he could have lived barely, but I think it would have killed. Uh, he would have gotten his battle bond, and Zara would have been in a really bad position. So that was really lucky for Zara. Now he's forced to switch out into the Bulu. Um, Kato doubles into torn, anticipating the Bulu to come out. It's a really good play on him. That dodge was so lucky. I mean, Kedot was probably fine to go for Hydro Pump. Um, just thinking about him, is such a huge threat to him. And it covered Zar going into Torn. And Bulu would still be kind of forced to go for Synthesis with um, Rock Sub and taking a pump. So yeah, Hurricane Zaga comes out and U turns out into Tangrowth. Thousand Arrows is gonna do zero as he gets leftovers and grants Terrain Recovery back. And. Um, does he HPS break in the torn or does he pull a double break into Greninja again? Though, this, I think Greninja, yeah, yeah, I think Greninja definitely would have killed the torn at 67. So he stays in this time, gets knocked off, goes for Sludge from trying to get the poison there. Um, I think he might have predicted him to go for U turn there as well. Um, or he knows that he can pretty much take any hit with the Tangros. But yeah, he has to switch out there, he has to be a bit careful. Alakazam, um, he knows he can live a knockoff. And he can Psychic, and yeah, it's in range, and Tornadus goes down, cool. So Infernape. It's probably gonna go for Flabbits here. U turn doesn't really make that much sense. I think Flabbits is really free here. Because uh, Kato's fire resist is uh, Greninja at this point. Well, yeah, because Heatron is dead, yeah. So Flabbits is pretty free here. Um, he might go into Tornadus if that can live a hit. I'm not sure if it can live a Flabbits. Mm -mm -mm. 
I feel like Ke um, yeah, Kettle's just gonna go Torn, that makes the most sense to me. Because Greninja can win this late game, he just has to weaken the Bulu and Greninja goes in. Which shouldn't be hard since Synthesis only has like 7 PP left I think, or is it 6? Maybe might have been, might be 6 only and Bulu doesn't have leftovers. So like late game Gren is a good win con for Kato, so he definitely shouldn't go to it. So he goes Torn, um, if it's max HP Helmet, which it should be, um, yeah it's able to live a Flabbit, exactly. And now Kato can potentially save the Torn. Knowing that it's locked into um, Flavids. Uh, Greninja should be able to live with Flavids. Um, but I'm not sure if he wants to go Gren. I think Flavids would do like 46 maybe to Greninja. Maybe 48. Oh well, yeah, he does go to it on the Flavids. And now... I mean, also the Rocky Helmet plus the Recall was really good. Now he's in Water Shuriken range. Does he break the switch and go for Spikes? Or does he just play it safe in Water Shuriken? Breaks the switch and goes for Spikes. Yeah. I feel like if Zar stayed in there on a Water Shuriken, he would have been screwed. So I kind of get I get why Kettle made the play, obviously. But it was really risky. So he goes into Tangles. He's just going to Sludge Bomb here because he doesn't want to play around with the uh, bulk up Tapu Bulu. And Zar's probably going to switch on to Morwald, breaking that. Because um, Morwald is obviously immune to Sludge Bomb. And if he gets Morwald in on a Sludge Bomb, it should be able to live an Earthquake um, even after Rocks and Spikes because it will get some Grassy Terrain recovery back. Um, as he gets Parrot, so we will never know if he predicted the Morwell there or if he just went for the safe Sludge Bomb. I assume he just went for the safe Sludge Bomb. Now he's probably gonna have to switch in Celesteela, he doesn't really have switch-ins for this, or he might just stay in. He stays in and goes for Earthquake. Obviously he's able to lift that with the grassy terrain. And now he has to switch up because he needs the Tangros for the Bulu, so he's gonna have to go Celesteela. And um, Zara could potentially break that and go for Thunder Punch, but he is probably fine to just play rough because play rough into Thunder Punch could, uh, should also kill. And Morwell is um, definitely faster, so yeah, play rough was fine as long as it connected because it brings Celesteela in range of Thunder Punch, so he does just Thunder Punch kill Celesteela. Now Greninja is gonna come out, and um, Zara is gonna have to go into either Bulu or. Um, he could also go Sloking, which would cover a Spike or a Water Shuriken here. But yeah, Kettle has to go Greninja here, I think, right? Because his Tornadoes might be in range of Sucker Punch. Well, I guess if the Morwa dies to Rocky Helmet, I'm not sure if it does. Helmet, how much did Helmet do? I forgot if it's 16% or 12% or whatever. But yeah, goes Greninja. I assume he's just gonna Water Shuriken because, like, the Morwa dies to Hazards, so Water Shuriken seems fine at this point, and the Greninja is like. The Monad can win you the game, there's one more rock switch and there's no point in playing around. He goes <laughs> into um, Sloking predicting that, gets four hits and um, yeah, Kedot is obviously going to switch out here because the next Water Shuriken does not kill. So he's probably just going to go into Alakazam or Tangros. Um, yeah, I think he's, yeah, Alakazam or Tangros. Does Zah have a double that covers Alakazam and Tangros? He could double into the, um, he could double into the... Uh, no, I think the Infernape is too low to double it in because rocks and spikes are up, which means Infernape only has one more switch into hazards. So yeah, I don't think he can afford to double into Infernape since the hazards would bring it super low. Kedot goes Zem there, um, which could take any hit from Sloking and would trace Regenerator. I mean, he traces Regenerator any anyway because it switches in before Zaz switches out. So Zaz goes to Bulu there. Uh, yeah, he couldn't double. The, like, Inferno would have been a good double if it was still healthy, but it was too low because of Flabbit's recoil and Rocky Helmet from Torn. So, yeah, um, Bulu covers the Alakazam, so that's fine for Zar. So, Kedot is just gonna switch out into Tangrowth here. Um, Zar might just have to go for the bulk up here and hope that Kedot gets fully paralyzed with the Tangrowth or something like that. Um, so yeah, let's go for bulk up. Tangros comes out. Um, Kettle is obviously gonna go for Sludge Bomb here. Pulls out the Z. Is it all out pummeling or is it Horn Z Horn Leech? It's all out pummeling. That does a lot and thankfully Kettle does not get paralyzed there. Gets the Sludge Bomb off which brings Bulu in range from pretty much, um, yeah, Alakazam, Greninja. So he goes to Horn which is gonna be a sack to the Horn Leech. Now he can go Greninja and probably, um... Or oh, Alakazam. Yeah, I guess Alakazam works as well. Either Alakazam or Greninja. Probably Alakazam, yeah, no? Mm -hmm. Alakazam can just click Psychic and claim its kill, I think, because Cloaking is super low, uh, especially with Hazards helping Kato cancel out the Regenerator, sort of. I mean, Hazards do a little bit less than Regenerator heals. I think Regenerator heals assert, and uh, Hazards do like 25, right, if he has Spikes and Rocks up to the Sloking. 
But uh, he should be able to go for Psychic with Alakazam. Because um, Slowking would obviously die to Psychic into Shadow Ball with the Hazards up, I think. So Zah is probably just going to have to sack the um, Tapu Bulu here to either the Alakazam or the Gren. But, wait, does the Zygarde have E-Speed? We don't know that yet, right? Hmm. Marwell only has... Oh no, he can also just sack the Marwell, I guess, yeah. Yeah, he can either sack the Bulu or the Marwell. Nah, he's, he's just going to sack the, the Bulu, yeah. Um, because like the Bulu dies to hazards, he does not have a way to get rid of the hazards. And the mobile also dies to hazards. Yeah, both of them die to hazards, so it doesn't really make a difference. But yeah, he's gonna take either Bulu or mobile, so like it comes out. Now, um, how does he even beat this? Because Infernip only has one more rock switch in. Sloking is really low. Okay, he goes Sloking, but Sloking is in Shadow Ball range, so now he's just gonna switch out and sack the mobile most likely. That way he gets a little bit of health back from Regenerator. Like around 10-12% maybe, because hazards cancel out the rest from a generator. Um, so that might have made it so that Slowking can now live a Shadow Ball, but it can still not do anything to Alakazam. Uh, so like, I think Val just loses this game. If he doesn't lose to Alakazam, then he's gonna lose to the Greninja. Um, but yeah, was, this was a fun game to watch for sure. I assume we're gonna see... Like this, I got probably... Unless the Zygarde is really spadev invested, I think it dies to Psychic after the Hazards. Yeah, because the Hazards bring it down to 53. So, I think it should die to Psychic, right? If it's, like, let me run a calc here. So, let's say Alakazam versus Zygarde. Um, let's say the Zygarde is max HP for now, right? Psychic does 46 to 54, okay. So, if it's max HP, it can live. Um... I don't remember if Kenneth already attacked the Zygarde and knows how bulky it is, but like... Psychic, if it's not max HP, definitely kills this. Um, I think it's probably more so offensive Zygarde, it should be in range of Psychic. If it's not in range of Psychic and it has, if it has E-Speed, this might be really bad for KDOT, because his Tangros is sort of low at the moment. And Greninja is really is also at 20%, so it's in range of E speed. So if Psychic does not kill, this could be really bad for KDOT. But let's just see if Psychic kills. Psychic comes out and does kill. Okay, so I think that should definitely be the win for KDOT then. If that didn't kill, it could it could have been scary. If well, I don't think the Zygarde had E speed. I think it was like sub glare, thousand arrows, and usually it's like coil in the last move, right? So now, um, this game is a wrap, yeah. So he, if he goes Inferno, which only has one more switch in, then Kaelot can just switch out and sack the Tangrowth, and then he come back in with his Greninja and click Water Shuriken, right? Um, no, 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 ne never mind, what am I saying? <laughs> yeah, he goes for Flare Blitz and he dies to Rico, so he doesn't have to click Water Shuriken, he can just click Dark Pulse to win the game. Because if he clicked U-Turn with the um, Infernape, then he would have died to rocks, and Newton would not have killed the Tangros also, and so he was forced to flare it's pretty much. And yeah, I mean, if he clicked like close combat and to a KO the Tangros, then Kato had to click Water Shuriken, but he still would have been fine because the ape would have died to rocks if it switched out and the sloking was really low. So he won the game no matter what at that point. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more content. Uh, I knew both players a bit, I didn't really get into it too much. Um, I would have been fine with both players winning, but yeah, I'm happy that my man Kato was able to pull out the victory. I thank you guys for watching. Smash that like button if you enjoyed and peace out friends.